Have you ever wondered what makes a good picture? Why some photos will only live on your phone and soon be forgotten, while others you will remember for the rest of your life? That's composition for you. Obviously subject matter is important as well, but there is a reason why you are the only one who will look back at the pictures of your kids while my grandmother is a masterpiece. And no, the answer is definitely not follow the rule of thirds. Today, we're going to talk about 10 things that you can do to improve your composition. And we are going to see that what we have been taught from time immemorial, from books, magazines, websites, it's actually not true, if not often misleading. Are you tired of shooting boring pictures? Then tag along and we are going to delve into the rules of composition. And be sure to stick up to the end for a killer tip. You will thank me for that in a few years. The rule of third is a scam. When I was a beginner, I used to buy almost exclusively what most manufacturers call an e-screen, the kind made for architectural pictures, the one with the grid. My most boring pictures have been shot that way, following that kind of grid. The rule of third is like a working harness for a toddler. You might think it's useful, but actually it's uh, halting your growth. So if you're a beginner, you might be tempted to follow a rule, any rule. We've all been there. But following the rule of third, it's actually hurting your growth. You are not growing as a photographer. You are way better off to start learning how to compose by feel. Forget Instagram, also known as stop obsessing over mediocre images. By the way, they are not all mediocre images. There are even really, really exceptional photographers on Instagram, but it's impossible even for a reborn Ansel Adams to keep up with the timing of a social media app. It's impossible to constantly publish masterpieces. And most of the pictures are actually mediocre because they are following someone else's trend. And if you manage to find some wow images on Instagram, do not just scroll along. Start examining why they've caused in you that particular reaction, why you find them so exceptional. This will make you understand in a much more insightful way why that particular composition works. Most of all, think about what you would have made to make them even stronger if possible. This is definitely an exercise that will make you a better photographer. Compose without a camera. A 365 project will work wonders in this regard. Not because you will take 365 masterpieces, you won't. You will take mostly really, really horrible pictures. But you will train your eye and you will start looking for compositions that work. And you don't have to carry a camera with you for an extended period of time, even if it helps. Just constantly look for pictures, even in, without uh, you know, taking out your phone or carrying with the camera with you. This way, when you have a camera with you, you will find much easier to find a great scene. Follow your gut. Blindly following the rule of thirds or copying someone else's trend won't make you any favors. My suggestion, instead of following a grid, is follow your gut. Yes, especially at the beginning, most of your pictures will be horrible. But this is a step-by-step -step process. You will get a little bit better every time you shoot a picture. And at some point, your gut will be giving you the correct answer, so to speak and you will be able to develop an unconscious understanding of composition. And that's what makes a great photographer, or at the very least a good photographer. As a bonus point, you will be able to develop your own style. Learn what you like. Make peace with the fact that not everyone will like your pictures. It's not just you, it happens to everyone, even to the masters. Think about it. If their contemporaries managed to not understand Van Gogh, George O'Keeffe, Picasso, Manet, why should it be so different for you? And I'm not suggesting that you are the next Picasso, the next Manet, but if it happened to the masters, it will likely happen also to you as well. So if you don't have to follow strict rules, uh, agreed, the rule of thirds, how do you get better at composition? But first, thank you for joining me today. If you're enjoying this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. 
First of all, you should study the masters. You will very soon see that the masters of photography very rarely, if at all, follow a strict compositional grid. Yes, if you insist, you can apply in retrospect some kind of grid, of compositional grid to their images. But that is not the way they shot the images. Indeed, most of them, when asked why did they compose a particular image in such a particular way, they generally answer with something along the lines of uh, it just felt right. It was how I understood, how I saw the scene. If you go around thinking about what particular grid you should apply to that particular scene, you will miss the decisive moment, the color contrast, the action, the intention. For example, do you want to, a particular image to feel unbalanced on purpose? Do you want to include that red patch in the background? Do you want to capture that particular subject when it's blinking or when his eyes are wide open? Do you need to wait for that motorcycle to stop? Study master painters. Our visual language has been shaped much more by painting than by photography. Beside painters, unlike photographers, in a sense of it easy. Yes, the technique is more difficult but they can uh, depict the scene in compositional terms however they like. They do not have to contend with reality, lining up with their expectations, so their compositions can be much stronger. You don't like that particular barrack in the background? Just don't paint it. Listen to music. Think to an image like it was a musical score. A gentle rhythm and a general harmony will lull the viewer into a relaxed state. Sudden raptures and pauses will jolt him. A monotone image will be, well, monotone and boring, unless you are really intentional about it. Maybe in the context of a wider project, as long as you're intentional, as, as long as you think about what you're actually doing. Think. Books or walls? Composition criteria varies wildly across like media, especially when you're taking into consideration picture size. Photos that will look great on Instagram, relatively small screen of a smartphone, might actually look positively horrible if you print them large. It's not just a matter of small defects. For example, an image being, not being particularly sharp, the facts that obviously will become much more apparent the larger you go by in size. This is also a factor, don't get me wrong, but mostly what uh, will differ will be compositional factors and up to a point even different subject matter. Moreover, some pictures work better in combination with others, for example in a book to illustrate a project and not just as single images. Others will stand perfectly fine on their own as single images. Understand that nobody likes the same things. I, for example, like very much strong contrasty pictures with bold colors, blocked shadows, and sometimes pictures with pastel colors, very delicate, reminding me of the kind of films that were available in the 70s. Others will love the flatter rendering of digital or of negative film stocks like Portra. Not everyone likes the same style, not everyone likes the same pictures. You have to take pictures for you. As long as you are taking pictures that you like, yeah! you will find the public, you will find someone who likes the same kind of pictures that you like. The same is true for composition. What you like, it's not necessarily what others will like. So the best piece of advice that I can give you is shoot for yourself. As long as you like the picture, someone else will love it and you will have a public. Maybe you won't have a big audience, maybe you won't find your audience straight away, but I can guarantee you, you will have one. And now to the bonus point. As I promised, you will thank me for this in a few years time. Don't delete your pictures, ever. No, no, not even the ones that are a little bit blurred or out of focus. Revisit your Capture One, Lightroom catalog periodically. Now that your taste has changed, you will find that those pictures that you thought were extremely good are actually mm, not so much. And pictures that you discarded at first are the ones that you now like. So what looked like a mediocre or even a bad picture is now a keeper. I can pretty much but guarantee that your taste will change during the years. Besides, you will become better at editing 
the software will become better at recovering mistakes, so pictures that nowadays are uh, not uh, salvageable will become salvageable. <laughs> you will be able to recover mistakes or, or pictures that now look like mistakes will actually be something that you like. Don't obsess over grids, lines, triangles. Try to enjoy photography and to develop taste and a sense for what actually feels right for you and to you. Composition is there just to convey the intention that you, as the photographer, as the author, want to pass to your viewer. And in this regard, you might also like watching this video next. See you next time.